speaking, you had a comment that, that you wanted to share before we went to break. You forgot <laughs> now, good, because I have a good question for you. Okay. Uh, you've done a really good job of just unapologetically showing up as Pinky Call. In a number of conversations we've had, you say, Dr. Key, my best, my best thing is me just being myself. Yeah. As we are so driven and sometimes compelled, and for all the entrepreneurs who are listening, they are looking at your life and trying to mirror mirror your success. And if I can only do it like Pinky, how did how have you stay grounded in you being anchored in doing it like Pinky? Um, I think that you, you know the short answer to this, right? Because we talk about this a lot. Yes. I think that one of the surest ways that I know that this business has been successful is because I've always been authentically myself. Literally, right? So I don't care if I'm in a room with a billionaire. Today I was just on the phone with the creator of Shake Shack and I'm talking to him like I'm talking to y'all, right? Or if I'm in a room with somebody that don't have a dollar in their pocket or somebody that's homeless, I'm going to treat you the same. You're going to get the same experience as far as how I show up for you. And that's not going to change. I'm rough around the edges. I cuss a lot, but I mean well. <laughs> I'm clear. I'm not mean, but I'm directing my thoughts and I want everybody around me to win. And people see that. So it doesn't matter if the lights are on. It doesn't matter if the cameras are rolling. It doesn't matter if I'm around somebody that got $5 million houses. I don't care about none of that. It's really all about the energy. And as long as I continue to show up with this authentic, raw energy that I have, people see that and they can feel that. You can feel good energy. I think that we all have that innate ability to feel people. Right. So, you know how you walk in a room. I can literally walk in a room and feel the energy. I can feel if the energy is right for me and I feel if the energy is wrong. But I say all of that to say that I've always showed up the same all of the time. And because of that, people love that. People love transparency. People love rawness. People love realness, which is why like, I'm over here like, yes, you're my spirit animal because you can feel when somebody is just being authentically themselves. And I think um, when it shows up that way, people want to be a part of it and people, you know, they want to grow with it. You know, I've always, since I started Slutty Vegan, I've always showed every level of my journey, right? The good, bad, and indifferent. When somebody was trying to sue me for $5 million that I was in a relationship with, right? When the neighborhood and where I had my restaurant, they were trying to um, put me out in the neighborhood because we had too many people down the block and they weren't happy about it. And all of those things, plus more, when, when, when literally my business was about to be destroyed because a comment that I made about not feeding police officers, right? I still always showed up as myself and I didn't waver from that. And I, I truly believe that is a part of the reason why the business has been so successful and continues to grow. It's, it's two years later and people still show up for the business. People still patronize the business. I can proudly say that my business is COVID proof. There's a whole pandemic going on and I'm up 15 percent of my business and in, in, in a matter of two months, I opened up two restaurants in the middle of a pandemic. But that literally is because of the energy of the universe and how I show up in the world and how I show up to people, how I show up to my employees, how I show up to my customers. And I think that that makes a real big difference as a boss. Right. As CEO, as people running companies, how you, they need to see and feel that authentic authenticity and what authenticity looks like is a lot of things. For me, that authenticity means I'll go in the kitchen and get on fries if the line is slow. You know what I mean? Like I'll go in the bathroom if it's something on the floor and I'll fix it because I understand how important it is to always show up and people see that passion and they want to support it. They want to grow with it and they can't do anything but respect it. Wow. Wow. Dr. Joy's question is for you because Pinky brought up a great point that her business has been COVID proof. And I've been watching you all look like you all have been COVID proof to me, which is absolutely <laughs> amazing and inspiring at the same time. But it's often a tale of two cities and a tale of two experiences. Dr. Joy, for businesses that have are experiencing the worst of times, they are met with they're not sure by the end of this month if their business will survive. The 40% of businesses that are slated to close is a real number. What advice do you have? And then Renee, you as well. What advice do you have um, for entrepreneurs to pivot during this time when they feel that they have just done all that they can? 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that that's a really important question because I know, you know, we've already heard Nicole talk about how building a business is like, you know, giving birth to a baby in, in a lot of ways, right? And so for a lot of people, your identity gets really tied up into being an entrepreneur. Yeah. And so if your business has to close or if there is a tough moment, then it becomes that you feel like you have been a failure. You really internalize that. And it's really important not to internalize those things. So the business may not be doing well, but it may not be through any fault of your own. You know, there's no way any of us could have known what 2020 was going to be. And so, you know, it's OK to be sad and be upset and disappointed about the fact that the business may not be doing well. But it's also really important to not. Um, internalize those feelings and make yourself feel like you are a failure. I also think that it's really important for people to be as resourceful as they can now. Um, so you've already shared an amazing opportunity for a grant. And there are lots of other businesses and corporations who are also doing things like grants and scholarships and all kinds of, um, you know, collaborations that they're offering for people who have been struggling during this time. I also think it's really important for people to not be ashamed if they have to pivot and maybe take a job in someone else's business for some time so that they can have the leverage to rebuild if that feels appropriate in the future. That's great advice. And, and you, Renee, what advice do you have for businesses or just people who are trying to tap into their talents to create a new pathway for themselves? You've done that extremely well. Yeah, I would tell people to go after something you're passionate about. So. I always think people get in trouble when you chase the money. You know, if you get into something because like, you know, like this profession is, I heard it makes a lot of money and I want to be in it. Or I know if you do this, I know this guy makes a lot of money doing this. You, you probably not going to be successful because you're chasing the check. And I, and it sounds, I know people are like, well, what do you work for? I say, if you're going to have to pivot, pivot into something you're passionate about because you're going to automatically want to work harder at it. You're going to be more interested in it. And then that passion that authenticity, as we talked about, that is going to show through. You know, if you're just showing up for the check, people can tell. Like, you can always tell the person, I can tell on a team. You can tell the players that are there for a check. You can tell the players that are there to get their bucket. They don't care if we win or lose. You can tell the players that want us to win no matter what. You can tell. People can, I don't care what people say. You can literally look and you can tell. If they could clap all day and be like, rah, rah, team. And we all know, nah, they're about themselves. Like, so if you carry that, if you carry that mentality that you're chasing the check, it's hard to catch it. I'm telling you, like I sat out, I opted out this season and we're not the NBA. So we're not, I don't have millions of dollars just like, all right, yeah, I'm cool. I'm opting out. Peace. I don't, I don't have that in my bank account, but I did opt out. I still have my mortgage. I still have my car note, opted out, no check coming. And then here comes uh, TMZ calling me like, Hey, I've been watching you interview and we want to know if you'd like to do a test run with us at TMZ Sports. And I'm like, what? Yeah. And after three days, they offered me a full time job, you know, and then I'm thinking I'm sitting here dancing and my blessed uh, blessings coming down. And then here comes NBA TV. Hey, we want to do a show on the WNBA. Can you be our, our permanent analyst? And I'm like, excuse me, what? Now, this is all from me opting out for social causes. I got three jobs literally in two months. I opted out two months ago. Didn't have a job. And, and now fast forward two months later, I'm the host of three different shows. Like, that's crazy. I w like I always wanted to be a host and be an analyst. But when I opted out, that wasn't what I was thinking about. I was thinking about what can I do to get this to get this movement going. And now let me correct that, because LeBron said it's a lifestyle now. That was all I was thinking about. And then the checks came and followed me. So I would just say if you want to pivot and you want to do something, you want to be successful, you can't chase the check. I have a quick pivot story. Are we late or do we have to go to a spot real quick? Yeah. But I had my quick pivot. I'll, I'll, I'll hold it. Now, Nicole, your pivot story. <laughs> oh, my quick pivot story is that I was listening to everyone and I was trying to think about where I know that everything shifted. It was, you know, I'm still sort of recovering from a very devastating financial blow of, you know, someone, you know, undermining the company financially. And, but I didn't give up and it was very hard. And um, I, I was struggling and then COVID hit and my pivot was give more. Mm -hmm. You know, we were talking about faith and you leaving and and not knowing what's going to happen. But, you know, we had these frontline workers that were bagging groceries, driving buses, subways in New York, cleaning up late, late after the regular cleaners at the hospital, our trash men and women, our postal workers. And I was like, 
nobody is supplying them. This is at the beginning. And so I said to my manufacturer, can we just make masks and give them away? Mm. And he said it would help if people, some people bought some <laughs> and then we could give more away. I've given over 500,000 masks away. And in that period of giving, when I was already tight, so much has happened. Wow. So, I mean, you know, partnerships, bigger, bigger than I imagined, um, initiatives, more service. And so I, I know that pivot sometimes is tight and but there is always a way to to find the faith in it. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I did want to ask everybody on the panel, because a lot of us do have this service heart. Mm -hmm. are, are any of us interested in a check? Anybody? <laughs> <laughs> like, McCall, I was going to money. <laughs> ask everyone and, and to make sure we can have a real conversation. It's okay to create generational wealth. No, I'm, I'm, I'm good. Good. <laughs> I wasn't clear. I'm, I'm very happy with the checks. Yeah, <laughs> I'm very happy to receive the checks. The point I was making was when I opted out, I was going to be checklist. Like they didn't call me before I opted out. They called me after I opted out. So when I was making my decision, I didn't know where my next check was going to come from. But now that they want to send me them checks, I, yeah, I, I want them all. Now, let's be clear. I want to take all the checks I can get, but it's not about that. When I opted out, it I had no idea what was coming for me. But but I agree with you, right? Like the, the biggest check for me is to be a resource to somebody else, right? That's the biggest check for me. And as a result of that, the money is going to come. But somebody asked me, like, what do you feel like is the biggest key to success? Right. And Nicole, what you said is so on point, like I must I have a service based business. I love to help people. It brings me joy to help. Yes. I'm a money magnet. Money comes to me. That's why I was just like, OK, money is going to come to me whether I want it or not, because I speak that and it comes out of my mouth. But the big check for me, the big success for me is really to be able to know that I can create something that will provide me the resources to help other people. And that that is bigger than money because money again money is going to come but that is bigger than money but then it also speaks to generational wealth because the more you give the more you will get and i'm a witness for the last two years the more that i have given i've gotten so much more in my business in my personal life and in my professional life that's just universal law uh, absolutely it is. that's exactly what it is 